Methane is a major contributor to global warming, second only to carbon dioxide. It's more potent in raising temperatures, but there's less of it, and it doesn't stay in the atmosphere for as long. It's thought to be responsible for around 30% of the rise in global temperatures since the 19th century. The biggest emitters are coal and oil and livestock. China is the world's biggest emitter of methane, producing just over 14% of the total. 111 countries have pledged to cut methane emissions at the UN Climate Summit in 2021, and China was one of them. Beijing has now unveiled how it plans to do that, with significant improvements in monitoring over the next decade, cutting flaring at oil and gas fields, closing methane leaks at coal mines, and collecting the gas emitted by oil fields. Well, Ewan Nisbet is Professor of Earth Sciences at Royal Holloway University of London. It's a huge problem. Methane's the, the second great um, human-added greenhouse gas. Um, yeah, it does get lost, much less attention. It's, it's often called the Cinderella gas. Um, it's got a lifetime in the air of, depending on how you measure it, roughly a decade. It's emitted by all sorts of things, particularly fossil fuels, um, from the breath of cows um, and from waste and, and from fires. And then they're very big natural sources from wetlands and things like that. Probably um, the biggest thing that's going to make the Paris Agreement fail, the very sharp rise in methane um, over the last 15 years um, is way, way beyond what the Paris Agreement expected. So China's uh, come to this agreement and it's focusing on reusing methane emissions uh, rather than necessarily reducing them. Uh, how could that work? A lot of China's methane emissions come from coal fields and they want to trap the methane from the coal field and then burn that instead of natural gas. Natural gas is methane, or pretty much. Um, uh, I'll put this into context. Um, the, the, all the humans around the world are um, emitting very roughly 360 to 380 million tonnes of methane a year from human activities. And China's emissions are about 65 million tonnes a year. So it's 15 to 20 percent. And um, most of the 150 countries or more have signed the Global Methane Pledge to reduce human emissions by 30 percent um, very quickly. Uh, China's the world's biggest emitter of methane, and they have not signed. So it's very, very welcome that now they do have a plan to reduce their emissions. There are lots of different ways you can reduce emissions, and some of them are pretty easy. And I very much hope that China is now going to get seriously into it. How encouraging is it, do you think, that the United States and China have found some common ground on this uh, ahead of the climate conference COP28 um, coming up in a few weeks? I think it's wonderful news. I'm, I'm very impressed, um, for example, the agreement with Turkmenistan to reduce um, their emissions. Um, we, there are lots of these relatively easy things to do that we, we should be doing. Uh, in China's... Um, from China's point of view, climate change is food security. If the climate um, goes wrong and the sort of summer that we had this year becomes um, not just usual, but actually a rather good summer um, compared to future years, we're going to have huge food problems. And um, whereas natural gas and stuff and coal mining is to do with energy security, where there are plenty of easy alternatives relatively easy. So do you put your food security first or do you put your energy security first? I think I'd say food is much more important and um, for that I think the world really needs to um, get together on things like the Global Methane Pledge. Um, methane is in many ways much easier to deal with than carbon dioxide um, and it, because it's got a moderately, it's got a lifetime of a decade or so, it comes down. Um, we can do that. We should do that. It should, it should be a very, very high priority.